Okay, this is gonna be murder ball. There are no rules to murder ball. There is no referee in murder ball. There are no fouls in murder ball. There are no throw-ins in murder ball. There are no corners in murder ball. There are no goal kicks in murder ball. I want an intense game of football. I want you to go in fucking hard on each other because we're trying to find out who's got the fucking bottle to deal with some of the shit that we're going to have to deal with, especially this weekend. The first team and reserve team squads will be getting picked on this session. If that's not enough motivation for you to fucking fight and show me, play with the intensity that we're hoping to see today, I don't know what is. First team and reserve team squads will be picked on the fucking commitment and quality that we see in today's session. Go the fuck through each other and show us how bad you want it. Ready? Let's fucking hear it then. That doesn't mean follow them back all the way, but keep it, keep it in mind. Yeah, Ron. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, so it's back. One of the biggest benefits of near the ball is although fitness is a big factor, it was a really good psychological indicator for who's willing to actually work that hard and that intent. It builds a better men mentality of just to keep going and keep working and keep going for it. Gabe! Murder ball is um, somewhat a fitness drill. Um, I know Marco Bielsa uses it primarily as a fitness conditioning drill. Uh, for us, we was using it partially for that, but also partially for a mentality test. Got sent off for taking a piece out of stick. Hey, switch it! And then you're in a position. Two minutes left, Joe. Yes, and again! Stop! Hey, Louis, get back post! Back post! Leave us up! Back him up! Yes, Carthy! Three, two, one. Oh, shit. Shit, that was like, well done, mate. It's a tough one, that. More of impression. Well done, boys. That's for you. So Come and get a drink, okay. lads. Cool down and have a good five minute breather. The rest of the session is going to be pretty so we've got it moderate pace. There's not going to be anything that hard now. You have to don't, don't cramp jacks. up, keep moving a little bit. Don't just sit down and cramp up. No, you won't be playing a game. We're going to be doing some set plays. We're going to be doing some shape work. On Sunday we were playing Jolly Carter, a Sunday league team, we were expecting it to be rough, so we used murder ball today uh, to gauge which lads we think are going to be up for it, which aren't going to shy away for a tackle, who aren't going to be influenced by someone giving them an elbow, calling them a name, and I think we've got a really good team going into the game. And beyond, the sort of balls that we're looking, what we want to do, both sides, is isolate the fullback. That's why you're dragging him out, and that's why Ronaldo's dragging him out on the other side, and we're looking for one-twos and run-arounds in behind. From the midfield, Camp and Gabe, off the ball running is going to be massive. That's how we make these like defenders just fucking lose themselves. Going in against Jolly Carter, we really want to see how we react to a lot of things. Um, it's about mentality. Um, coming up against the team who might want to play rough with us, great. Happy days. I don't really expect too much from the game. I really want to just see performance and a bit of grit. Communication is something that we definitely need to improve on this week. And uh, 
and I think some scoring some fucking goals would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, let's start this week off with a bang. Got three matches. Let's get three wins, lads, yeah? yeah. Johnny Carter's a bit of a, from what I'm hearing, I've, ne I've never seen them play, but from what I'm hearing, they're a bit of a double-edged nightmare in terms of that. Uh, they're a nightmare, <laughs> uh, but they're also, they've got some good players on board. You three, fucking, you three in midfield today are gonna be absolutely vital. One thing I wanna see improved upon from the ducking field game is playing through the middle because we didn't play that many passes. We had less than 100 completed passes, right? We can definitely do a lot better than that today. So one thing that I'm gonna ask for specifically today from Gabe and from Cam, whenever Aaron's in possession, you three make a triangle. Whenever he's in possession, you two make a triangle for him. What you lot are looking to do is get to the byline and cross it in. Once we go into, if we're crossing it in towards here, I need you three steaming in. One front, one back, one middle and you'll get on the end of it. And we're, today, lads, we're scoring some fucking goals. Ducking field was about competing. Today's about fucking putting it on somebody, okay? Okay, go again, come on. Gabe and Aaron have gone as a pair of sixes. You've got a bit more time. Move it up the pitch when you're playing out. We're gonna have to get a fucking grip of this game in a minute. How are we making them look better than Ducky? Go on. Ah! Yes! Here's a pot of goal. Yes! Well, well, come. Oh, what a save! Oh, oh, what a save, oh, Mate, he's putting... Oh! No, that was the one that he... I think he'd done his knee. Come on, come on. Basically, I need you to start setting the line. They are trying to push up off us, be really obvious and scream for offsides, right? You'll get the offsides, I think. I think you're gonna to start to get the offsides, but I need you to set the line. Richie, you're flagging behind and causing the offsides with us. So, your job, scream. Ollie's obviously next to you, Will's next to you, but if you fucking scream to tell him, that's the whole line going up in it then, right? Playing well, that was a fucking brilliant ball in there. You're literally breaking fucking ankles out here. Louis, Louis. You two are absolutely fucking destroying these 1v1. Lads, midfield, get these two 1v1 versus the fullback and then pile into the box and let's fucking get level in this game, right? Come on, lads. Don't let them wind you up because they're definitely going to try, yeah? But that's you're playing I'm, fucking I'm sick, man, mate. Yeah, that's cool. Just don't lose your head, though. Anytime you get 1v1, it's over, yeah? He's off! He's off! We was asleep for the first two goals. Um, very soft penalty, and before you know it, you're three, you're three goals away. Um, and that was the top and bottom of it. It's gonna be a long season for you. I thought there were spells of play that were good enough. Um, in terms of the scoreline, not great, it's obviously, but there were a lot of things that we didn't work on, so stuff like conceding from set pieces. Quite unfortunate, obviously, on the day, but it happened. Lads, remember, I'm fucking testing you in pre-season. If I wanted you to play a load of fucking idiots so you could just get a nice feel-good factor highlight reel for fucking social media, it's not what we're about. We're about trying to be competitive. 
So we're giving you hard fucking games. There won't be easy games when we start the league. So what's the point in playing easy games now? Get used to working hard. But the win will come. Today we got the goal. Now we have to start on the fucking clean sheets, don't we? There's aspects that need working on. Ultimately, it was a team that was new. Ultimately, it was a team that hadn't played together. Uh, they'd literally done the one murder ball session prior to going into this. For many players, it was the first time um, even being with the Stratford Paddock teammates. Um, and it was a very, very difficult test. I imagine the tests from this stage in um, aren't as difficult. So my role is to be the reserve manager for Stretford Paddock Football Club. Um, we will be competing in our own league, we'll be competing in our own cups, and we will have and we will have inter-squad friendlies and friendlies against other teams and other uni teams and whatnot. So my role is really to create and foster an environment where players can develop and be ready to move into the first team as well. Yeah, it feels good being reserve team captain. Um, you know, I kind of got into this because um, you know working with Steve and everything and, and I wanted to get back into some kind of football so for me a lot of it was just get a bit of fitness and just enjoying some football so if you know if I can lead some of these lads to play at a bit of higher standard or anything like that that would be absolutely quality. A little bit nervous you know I think that this one I think should have made the game against Bootown should have been maybe like a, a bit of an easy game maybe I think the two first two games were one of the best teams in kind of amateur football and then a very, very good, very rough Sunday League team. I think this one should have been slightly easier. Uh, but I think not, you know, getting beat 3-1 and 5-1, 3-0 and 5-1, I think there's a lot more pressure on this game now. Uh, I think that even though it's probably going to be a bit more of a mixed squad, not maybe the first team, I think that, you know, don't think anyone wants to go three games without a win. Steve is very autocratic and democratic as well, I guess. But um, Steve's very loud. He demands a lot of players, which I do too, but I think we demand it in slightly different ways. Um, I'd say I'm a bit more democratic. Uh, I like to foster relationships with, with players, as does Steve as well. But I do look to Steve as well for tips and stuff like that because he's a manager of the first team. But also I think with me, and my style, uh, you have to create an environment where players feel comfortable and you've got to create an environment where players can easily improve and that's done through building relationships. Coach and player relationships are very, very important. So that's very key. That I think is about 50% of the job. You can, have your ta yeah, you can have your tactics and you can have your technical side, but you've got to foster an environment where you can create good bonds and good relationships. So that's what I like to do. And that's, that's what I think should be done in the reserve team as well fight and desire on the kick. First ball, there's got to be a paddock ball. Second ball, paddock ball. Third ball, there's got to be a paddock win, yeah? Everything we do has to have some grit and some form of desire in it, yeah? You've got to go out there and fight for each other, okay? First, you have to play for yourselves, but don't go out there and let your teammates down, yeah? You've got to fight today. You're fighting for your places in the first team, yeah? This is big for all of you. There's a lot of talk yeah, yeah. about tackles and stuff like that. Like, that's just a given. First ball, in second ball. But the main thing is, let's just play football. That's been the two things. That's the thing. In the last two games we've seen, they detected how we play football. Let's get on the ball, let's play it about. We've just done what we've done the last two sessions. We've played a bit of football, we've talked. Do that today, we'll be in this lot. I absolutely hated that game. I, I, I genuinely had to walk away at one point because I was that angry. It just simply wasn't good enough. It wasn't the standard that we train at. It wasn't the standard that we even warm up at. What happened against Booftown Miners was unacceptable. That should never happen at this football club. It was shocking, it was abysmal, it was embarrassing. Not through fear! You pulled out a tackle, that's bullshit! That's fucking shit! And you know you're not better than that! You're a fucking joke! I honestly think 
I honestly think I, I, I could have had more of an impact on the pitch than some of the people there. And some of the people there are lucky to be coming back to training. The five nil down at half time is disgraceful. It's fucking awful. I'm livid. I'm so angry because that is ridiculous. Yeah? Dancing through you like you're not there. Yeah? No one's affecting play. No one's getting touched like the players. It's the basics of football. I would assume that you would all have known that, yeah? Like Roby said, then the absolute fucking basics. Yeah? Being such tight to somebody. How many times, how many times just. You, you guys talk me through this. The day I have somebody on our back four on the shoulder, and not one of yous, not one of yous, is when, you know what, I'll get tight to him, you cover behind me. If I don't win the header, you can cover me. When did that happen? Right? What did we talk about before the game? Communication, yeah? It's, it's shocking. I can pick about four, maybe five of yous. They're actually fit enough to, to wear the shirt. And I'm not talking fit enough in terms of how far you can run. I'm, I'm talking fit enough to be here, here at this club. No mentality, no winners, no leaders. They've come out there and they've bullied you. They've bullied you, you're all adults and you're getting bullied by other adults. It's ridiculous, yeah? On that pitch, you, you wear the padded badge. This is a very, you, you're a very privileged club. This is a very privileged position to be in with everything you've got at this club. And to perform like that on the pitch is unacceptable. To compete as a team, we need to win our individual battles, don't we? And right now, we're not winning a lot of them. Headers, one-on-ones, 50-50s, get stuck in. If you bleed, you bleed. If you bruise, thing. you bruise. Hey boys, hey! Yeah, yeah? Okay, well done, yeah? There, there were some positives in that game. There were some positives in the second half. You know, out the back, we were much better at defending our set pieces. But we do have to understand that the game in the entirety, it, that was unacceptable. It was almost embarrassing. Actually, you know what? Like, it was embarrassing. I'm going to have to have a conversation with Stephen about players who have to go. And I, personally, I like all of you. I don't want to get rid of any of you. But when push comes to cheers, but when push comes to shove, yeah, some of you will have to leave. I don't think anyone gets to be in this mix, yeah? We've got a lot to work on. It's an uphill battle. But we'll get there. And you know what? Just going for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be a cunt. I'm putting that out there. I'm going to be a cunt for the next couple of weeks. And if you don't like it, it's up shit because I'm going to make you better. Um, well, got beat 6 0, so not, not great. Um, if there was any positives, the positive was that the second half we looked a lot better. We started playing a bit of football, which, which is what we're trying to do you know at the end of the day we're, we're doing all these Saturday league playing Saturday league football and a lot of these teams are like that big lads play the ball over the top strong and bully people and that's how they came out in the first half and second and we didn't deal with that we're a very privileged football club with a great setup and a 6-0 thrashing uh, thrashing like that should never ever happen but I think the issue was a big lack of communication I think we expected more talking, we didn't get it. We expected more fight, especially in that first half, and we didn't get it. Communication was poor in the game because, again, we're still establishing relationships amongst, between players. Um, now, communication comes in a lot of different methods. Just because on the sideline we can't hear somebody screaming, it doesn't mean that smaller conversations are happening on the pitch, player to player, something as simple as, you know, you drop in, I'm going to step up, things like that. So in terms of communication on that level, we didn't see it as much. Nice and easy to start with. Kind of turn round. Everybody spread your legs. Spread them properly. Come on, the ball's got to go through there, come on. So once you've knocked the ball through, 
bring it back to the front, get to the back of the queue. Next person can go until the person at the front is at the front again. We keep going, okay? So when your group has the person back at the front, that's how you win. So the first part of it where the players were lined up, the ball got knocked through the legs. We split players into the unit groups and that was to build stronger relationships amongst those amongst those players. Um, the initial thing of just doing it is getting a little bit of team building together. So they're all trying to achieve one thing and that's to get the person who started all the way back to the front. It's really simple. It's really effective as well as actually seeing who likes working as a team. And to be honest, the, the results that we're seeing on the day, all the coaches sort of observing what was going on, everybody wanted to achieve that thing. And the guy sitting down first, he loved it. Is there any cheating going on there? Okay. Get the ball through. Bring it to the front and sit down. That group, five press ups. Only five. Going to change it again now. So this drill's nice and easy. There's one cone here and there's one cone here. Do me a favor, put the ball there. Yeah, and you go connect with them. Take your hand off the ball. Aaron, you go secure it from the backside maybe. You're not allowed to use your hands and you come this front side. Keep the ball trapped in. And we've got to come up to this cone. Just watch where your hands go, Cam. So one of the biggest things for the team trying to get the ball around the cone as a group, that's more sociological. And it's a setting where we sort of see them getting a problem and finding a solution. <laughs> so one of the best things with that was it allows people to think outside the box and be creative. Ronaldo put the ball between his legs and no other team thought of doing that. Um, it also allows them to have a little bit of, of a laugh, gets them closer together, they get to know each other's names, they're obviously very close to each other and stuff, it has, it has all these great factors of team building. Three, two, one! If the ball drops, start again! There's hands, there's hands! Disqualified! Winners! 15 press-ups. Come on, Gabe, it's not that bad. Chip arms on you, you should be able to do press-ups. So face outwards, link arms. Link, hold hands, not link arms, hold hands. So all of a sudden we've got a psychological and sociological factor where the ball's removed from it and it's just pro solving a problem. You've got to talk to one another, how weird stuff. Yeah, everybody do a backflip, that's an idea. And then that was actually really strange. The first group that we had, the leader of that group was a 16 year old, Daniel Johnson. And he figured it out how to do it and everybody went off him. And once they worked that out as a team, as a unit of how to do it, it all, it all of a sudden changed the dynamic. So there was quite a few flashy players in there where, and it gives people a platform to speak where they might not usually be able to just out of ability. Have you watched uh, the video? Oh. Wait, wait, this is the funny bit. Because it almost works. It almost works. Wait. Hey. Well done, guys. Yeah. Um, Sam, you take five midfielders, grab a diff from colour bib. You take five forwards, grab a bib. So now this is where the fun begins. I'm paused there. The coach that's assigned to your team is going to pick one designated person to talk. Ronaldo, you're first.
What I want you to do now, I want two of you to go to that pitch and tell me who the most effective communicators are. Do you know what that means? <laughs> New talker! Um, it allowed players an opportunity and a platform to go and speak because not everybody can lead on the pitch, but when we say, okay, you're given, you're in charge of your team, this is what needs to happen, it then gives them the ownership and leadership that they need to effectively communicate with everybody around them. And what about the green team? They, they were, oh, well, he, um, not, what's your number two? Yeah, yeah. He was really effective, yeah. was he? So he spoke to the team and then they listened. To them. New ball here. One more rule. Nobody can talk. So having the psychological factor of nobody can talk means that people have to think of a new way to communicate. One of the interesting things from it is that people started clapping. And I actually really, really like that because it's just that different spin on how to get somebody to sort of look up and notice certain things. Just going to give it a minute, and then when it goes, everybody talk. It will be the loudest you've ever heard. We can now talk. It was so much good communication. It wasn't. It wasn't even like yeah, pass to me. It was like man on. You've got space. Turn like, and all those little things broken down creates that team camaraderie, it creates that really positive communication skills that the players need on the pitch together in a match day. I didn't say you couldn't dribble, to be fair. All right, he's playing rugby, and he? Head up, volley. Okay. What did you guys find happened when one person could talk? It was less organised. People were in the right position. They were all in the same space. So not everyone's great. Okay. Or sometimes they didn't talk. Even that one person didn't talk. Okay. And was there anybody you thought was really effective at talking? I thought uh, Will, the centre back for Bonder. Will Binder? Yeah. yeah. He was really good at communicating with the club. You said Yayan yeah. on this pitch here, he was really good. Anybody else see a leader? Yeah, the number 12. Oh, yeah, the Birmingham kit. Yeah. And from okay, cool. So now we'll get you guys playing a little bit of football because that's what we're here to do. Well, in terms of our communication and our talking, it's very key. Very, very key. No unit in any industry, any job, no team will work if there's a lack of communication. So really, for us to train it, um, we've got to do a lot of social psycho stuff, whether it's all in one session or whether we spread it out throughout the season but we have to improve that. We have to get our units working together and it's about trust as well. There's reasons for why the performance was what it was, or there's way, ways that we can improve on that performance. And I thought the psychological, sociological session was the perfect thing to come out of that game to do. And also to lead us into the next six weeks of a programme of training to help get them into the system. I thought it was great ice breaking. I thought it was a, a very relaxed and fun session. And I thought it, it broke down some of the barriers uh, and some of that insecurity about being able to talk to people um, that I think has been there post trial. Do you think from the trial, you know, two weeks ago, a lot of these players didn't even know, some of them might not have even known anything about the football club. If you like, when we go to the byline and we try and check it back to the penalty spot, the reason that we do that is so that the striker preempts that and runs to the penalty spot. Yeah. So it looks fluid and it looks you know, telepathic, mm. but it's just trained. Yeah. And that's it. And then sometimes he might not go to that. He might go to the front post and flick it. Yeah. But it's it's the options that you've got available to you. We give them a framework and it's their abilities and instincts that's going to take you whichever way it takes it. Then that's where we as staff have to stand by those guidelines. Yeah. Because we're not right now and the number of players that have come up to me and complained that they either don't get it or they're frustrated because they're trying to do it and the others either don't get it or are ignoring it. But their biggest issue is that they're getting conflicting messages. Yeah, yeah fair enough. And it's not really explained to them that sometimes it'll look like this, sometimes it'll look like that. It's been 
very just like no no it's this is what we do or this is what and it's just like okay it's football you don't have different options all the time like, I had a player send me a text saying sorry we let you down I want to bleed for this shirt and that's the sort of stuff we want to see we need players we need all of our players to be on that level of desire and fight and willingness to run yourself into the ground so you can play for Stretford Paddock Football Club. I've got the next four weeks I want to do today. Yeah. Because I've, I've got a load of ideas I want to get through. I've got the idea to involve every single last coach. Mm. I've got, you know, we can split the pitch, we can work on condescending things. So, you know, playing out from the back versus a high press. Mm. Well, well, way more than since we, we, we turned up to that Boozworth game and it was the basics that led us down. Yeah. Effort, getting such tight, you know, talking to one another, be, being a bit more on the ball with things. Mm -hmm. So, I know defensively we've worked a lot on like a little block stuff like that, but we need to bring that intensity up, especially no, with defenders. I spoke to Ronaldo yesterday. yesterday. He was not, saying that he feels he just goes flat against Charlton. I'm expecting a very, very close to best eleven. If I can get my best eleven out, I am confident. And if, if they're not capable of doing it, we've got big problems. We've got to be so much more meticulous in everything we do as a coaching group. As coaching staff, we need to really raise our levels. Um, everybody's guilty of a team where you get players and you don't have the best week of training. Coaches sometimes don't have the best week of coaching, but we need to really raise our standards so much higher so we can push them further on and push them much more higher. We need to give them so much more ownership and we need to really nail down a way of doing things and a simple standard of hard work, a simple standard of effort, a simple standard of being on time, a simple standard of of having things prepared for game days, like we really need to up the ante with everything. We we know we've got a good set of lads that can play football. We need to enable them to work hard whilst doing that. Right here we come, boys. Listen, lads. As I said a second ago, this is not the team that lost eight one last week. So get the fuck that out of your heads. Oatsy's just played the team that beat him eight one, and he's lost ten one to him. These are a fucking good team. These are a fucking good team. Eight and ten. No, sir. Cam, as soon as he turns, I want you deep, yeah? Deeper than you feel like. We can flatten it out and use guys as well. Wingers, I know I want you as high and wide, but in the build-up, let's be around and be available for a pass. We go high and we go wide once we get to the edge of the box, because that's going to pull their full-backs away and create space for them lot to dive in. Most importantly, lads, I want you to go and fucking express yourselves. We've got some proper talent in this team, yeah? Proper fucking talent in this team. So go and fucking show them what you're about. Ronaldo, Ronaldo, you read it? You read it to double up if they're fucking coming overlapping all the time. Right, let's fucking go, lads, let's fucking go. Yes, Connor! Yes, Cameron! Oh, look it! Oh, look it! Go on, go on, Cam! Go on, Cam! Rive! Rive! Press on the 23! Press on the 23! That's it, Rive! And again, 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 again! Ronnie, go and get up here now! On him, on his touch! On his touch! Go get her, ass! Well done, ass! Doing fucking great, defensive shows. Aaron's getting stuck, they're getting almost too far. And it's alright to leave your man alone wide here. That's across. No, no, that's not there. The no, no, that, not that, not there, yeah. Look left, Will! Yeah. 
Johnny, get warm. It was offside, wasn't it, Lan? Gonna have a sit down, man. Fucking hell, ref! Ref, he's just kicked him in the head and you're allowing this. Get a fucking grip! Ball! Go on, yours, Will. Well done, William. That's it, that's it, that's it! Keep him here, boys! Penalty! Fucking hell, referee! Get a fucking grip! Ball, that fucking hell. Good thinking, Connor. Well done, mate. Oh, ref, ref, don't shoot yourself. Put your fucking whistle in your mouth. Go on, Cameron. Go on, Cameron. Yeah, because it's a fucking yellow card, mate. Yeah, that. If you'd have booked him, it would have been sound. You need to fucking have a word with your own team, our kid. And we're going to score. I feel it coming. We've had way more shots than them. They've had a couple of sighters and they've had a little bit of success getting down that left hand side of, the, of our right hand side. But this is the best half of football that we've played. They got back into it around about the middle, but do you know why? The fucking good team. Of course they're going to, but we're on top in this game. What we have to do now is to fucking be ruthless, yeah? Be 100% with your passes. Hit it harder. Make him fucking control it. Let's get the first fucking shot in this half, and I guarantee the first goal comes for us, yeah? This first half, we've had more shots in the first half than we did in the entire last game, okay? You're playing intense, you're playing well. Let's just up it that little bit more, okay? It's going to get tired in this one. They're ready to take heads off. We need to go out and step it to them, yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Anything from you? Just fucking sweet, yeah? Fucking get right in. Just you fucking have them. Hey, Rivet, five, right five minutes. Make it fucking count. Make it fucking count, yeah? Touch. And you should have booked our player, to be honest. That was a card offence. You should have booked it. And now because you've not got your cards out, I'm sure you're probably going to give a, a card for the first foul in this half. It's not good enough, mate. I prefer to talk to you, talk to the captain, talk to our manager. Okay, well, talk to him then because the game's getting away from you. True, yeah, true. And, mate, you've got to watch the fouls in the penalty box at free kicks. They're all over us, you're not even looking at it. You can do better. Do better, do better. Let's get involved, yeah? It was a good dig before, he was unlucky. Luke, we ain't seen you in about a month. Let's make it worth the fucking appearance, eh? Mate, no one on the pitch better than you, yeah? Let's fucking show it. On the 23, yeah. on his fucking touch, on his toes. He's fouling every cunt all the time. Right. Go through the back of the cunt once and let him know you're there, yeah? He ain't gonna book you. Might as well fucking have a go. To instill a winning mentality, it's the responsibility of the manager and the coaches first. Yes. Go, on, go, on, go on, no, sir. Go on, no, sir. But then it's the responsibility of players to match that. Hey! Hey! 2-0, 2-0, We need to nail everything, absolutely everything to the smallest detail about how we're going to be better. We need to really up the ante in, in terms of tempo, intensity, standards and that's what makes us winners. We need to almost 
be the winner mentality. Yes! I'm not sure a winning mentality is a thing. I think there's a good attitude to training and playing. And if we've got a good attitude to training and playing, at the end of the day, us as a coaching staff can add the sprinkles on top. But the players have got to bake the cake. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking played some. But that's a great turning point. Pre-season doesn't matter about results. But what pleases me the most is the performance. Everybody was doing what they was asked. There's areas to improve on. I'm going to watch that fucking video again about nine times like I always do. There is things that we need to improve on. But overall, a fucking absolutely great performance. And great performances will lead to fucking great results. Now we have to start putting a little bit of consistency together. Well done, everyone. That was fucking great. Everybody that's at the club came through the trial at the club. They've all shown promise to be good enough to be part of this football club. What we have to do now is have them trust in their teammates and trust in the system and turn it up with the correct attitude and that's going to take us a long way. Confidence, attitude and working hard and that is a winning mentality as far as I'm concerned. Congratulations to everyone that played, fucking coached, watched, filmed and everything today. That felt fucking quality lads, well done. Well done boys. Yes. Well done. 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 Well done.